Our daily life is in the process of undergoing what amounts to an evolutionary transition. New technologies that are appearing one after another are having impacts in many fields, leading to the creation of yet newer technologies. Horiba is tackling this evolutionary change with our measurement technologies. A paradigm shift has started. Electric and autonomous vehicles will be major players in enabling next generation mobility. Connected technology will be used to connect vehicles and society. Environmental issues are being addressed on a global scale. The semiconductor industry is constantly generating technological innovations. Active research is being conducted in the biotechnology and healthcare fields to improve human health and life. Analytical and measurement technologies are supporting the continuing progress of our society and industries. The Horiba Group is a comprehensive manufacturer of analytical and measuring instruments. We work in a broad range of business fields, including the automotive measurement, processing and environmental, medical, semiconductor and scientific fields. We are expanding our possibilities even further by maximizing the synergies between our various business areas. Our product and application development is conducted across different fields to provide wide-ranging solutions that satisfy the needs of our customers in a timely fashion. Furthermore, we conduct research and development and manufacturing activities in many locations in Asia, Europe and the Americas. We have recently started building a new center in China where we will undertake everything from developing applications and manufacturing products to providing services from a single location. Hollywood's network is always expanding. In addition to R&D, all manufacturing processes, material procurement, assembly, inspection and shipping are consolidated in our own plants. This enables us to develop and provide high quality products with a short lead time. Honeyba is taking the initiative around the globe to mount an agile response to the changing environment in order to cultivate our business and to improve our value as a company. We opened the Reno Technology Center in the U.S. to enhance our development activities in the semiconductor field. Moreover, we are making contributions to society in areas outside our own areas of business as a leading corporation in the analytical and measuring instrument field. Our management is aimed at matrix management, which is our proprietary global operation model to respond to market conditions and trends in various countries around the world in each of our five main business areas. We have rolled out a medium to long term management plan, ML Map 2023, with the objective of achieving further growth by expanding our areas of business and building new business models. The Falcon is our symbol of ML map. The Falcon is a bird that takes aim at its target from a viewpoint high in the sky and then swoops down to achieve these targets swiftly and precisely. Our mission is to satisfy the expectations of our customers, partners and society through the unique products and services that are created using our highly advanced analytical and measuring technologies. <clears throat> we would like to convey to the world the joy of understanding through measuring. 
Hollybus Technologies are shining a bright light on the future that is yet to be born. Namaskar. Good afternoon. This is your host, moderator Prakash Abhyankar. A warm welcome to you all to yet another wonderful webinar on ELF Forum. Today is a very, very interesting topic of our drinking water measurement, current scenario, and in modern techniques. Safe water is constitutionally guaranteed in India. However, this is a subject to the state. And union ministry or union government is only providing the guidelines or the standards. But we all know we have a big challenge for the quality of tap water in most of our cities. It is just not drinkable. Let me share you, in mid-November 2019, EIS conducted a study in 15 major cities including state capitals and metros like Calcutta, <coughs> Chennai. And the report was published. It was very much big, a big debate within the country. Because Mumbai water was found to be the safest, meeting all 11 parameters as per BIS. However, capital city of India really had the worst water and it ended up at the bottom of the table. Quality produced at the filtration ground may be great, but as it travels to the distribution network, or the trunk, the service maker wires, it gets contaminated. The gradual deterioration of the quality of water is because most of the last mile pipeline network is very poorly maintained. Water distribution network that span across the several thousand kilometers needs proper care. And that results in a variety of data, different locations. <coughs> With this, it becomes very, very, very necessary to have a modern measurement system across the water supply network. And it should be monitored online. This will help not only to identify the source of trouble, but also we can mitigate in real time. And today, we are going to discuss this kind of scenario, what is happening globally, and what is happening in India. So, all right, so let me now introduce you to the today's speaker. We have very eminent speakers today. Mr. J.S. Kamiyotra is ex-member secretary and also having 38 years of experience in policy formulation, development of environmental standards, establishment of real-time monitoring networks in other places. He is also a member expert appraisal committee for industry sector constituted by Ministry of Environment and Forest and technical expert for Punjab Pollution Control Board. This we have we are very lucky to have him here today to explain what is the current scenario for India and what is the way forward. Let me introduce you my colleagues, Mr. Kinitoiru Fukuhara is a section leader in Japan uh, with our uh, sister company, Horiba Advanced Techno and our group company, which is expertise in water products. We have uh, Evoxy C, he's a product expert for water products, again from uh, Horiba Advanced Techno. The flow of webinar would be as follows. I'll introduce our company first, what Horiba is doing. You had some glimpses in our corporate video. Then later on, I will invite uh, Mr. Kamiyotro to present his uh, talks. And then Fukuhara-san will explain, and we'll have Evoxy at the end who will explain our solutions. We will have question and uh, Q&A session at the end of the webinar. 
please reserve your all queries however during the presentation if you have any queries please type it out in your chat box which is on the right side so let me allow you to explain what is horiba horiba is a japanese company established in 1945 we are doing around 2 billion dollar business on the globally and our current group chairman and ceo is mr atsushi horiba important thing is we reinvest 8.1% of our net sales into r&d and that's why horiba is always ahead in the technology that is our this is our picture of our factory which we built with a big investment and it's very close to the kyoto which is ancient capital of japan horiba products in some way touches human life and this is the various areas like automotive or the exhaust analysis water analysis or even in space we have our products going all level which touches human life with the applications of different products we have five segments we are analyzer manufacturer so in automotive exhaust the mechatronics this all goes in automotive we have a products which are in process and environment then our globally famous or diagnostic equipment especially very useful in this covid uh, situation the medical equip equipment then we have world famous mass flow controller goes in semiconductor industry and particle size analyzer and raman spectroscopy let me introduce horiba india we are uh, having headquarters at delhi where i am sitting right away and then we have factories and offices across india we have fact this is the photograph of our factory in chakan pune where we have a state of the art test centers as well as a lab, calibration labs and a manufacturing center we have recently got a factory which is under construction right now at nagpur it's a 12 acres of land and the key point is besides reagent manufacturing we are going to do here a training center for our customers and process and environment horiba is into not only water business we are having gas analyzers temperature sensors thermometers and environmental radiation monitor with this we are your true partners for process and environment now i request mr kamiyotra to start his presentation and show us what is current scenario and what is the way forward mr kamiyotra thank you uh, mr abenka and uh, good afternoon to everybody it's a pleasure to share the views with all of you today so as uh, we know that uh, covid has brought a change in our lifestyle be it the way we live whereas before the covid our most of the time was spent in moving but now most of the time is spent in the residence so a change has come in the lifestyle everybody wants to be safe but it has given few important things like technology what we are doing today we are using the technology and having a webinar we are all of us sitting and listening which we could not never have thought of before this but it has given few important things like hygiene it has given sanitation and this cannot be accomplished unless we take care of the water we need water because we need to wash the hands so what is water now question that how back please back so if you look at that so india has just 4% of the total world's water whereas the population is 18% the land availability is 2.4% of the world population a world area and the storage capacity is of the water that we have is 200 billion 250 billion cubic meter which is around 6% of the total water requirement whereas other countries have more than 200% of the storage capacity so this is a big gap in the storage capacity that we have and what we need to have can we go back can we go back to the slide please back yeah if you look at the water consumption in the country 
our 85 to 90 percent of the water, groundwater especially, is used for irrigation. But the economics of that water efficiency is hardly 30 to 38 percent, and rest is all wasted. Large part of the country are water stressed. That means there's hard water not available during summer months. And as a result, many thermal power plants are closing down their operation during summer months, resulting into loss of crores of rupees. And if you see the world figures, it says that in India, uh, 2016, India ranked as one of the worst country with respect to providing safe water to the public or its people. That does not mean that the scenario will remain the same. We have now the Jal Shakti mission, and we have a target that by 2024 to provide piped water supply to all. Next, please. Next, please. Next. Next, please. If we see the country distribution of the water consumption and how people live. So we just see that 11, 100 million people live in areas of poor water quality. That means the quality is bad. Our, the supply is not uh, up to the mark. That is the minimum amount required. Or it is not continuous random supply. So this is a big challenge that in a country which we are progressing and we want to be a power, we need to give water good water, safe water to all our public, which is still lacking. Next, please. And if you see the pipe water supply, because when we talk about safe water supply, it needs to be a pipe water supply. And still, many parts of the country, we are not able to provide even 50% of the population with the pipe water supply. So there's a big gap. And the target of the Jal Shakti mission is to have pipe water supply by 2024 to all the cities, all the public at large. With the public population growing and economy also growing, the water demand is increasing. Next, please. Next, please. Water demand is also increasing. So the present water demand during 2017 was 1100 billion cubic meter. And it is expected that by 2050, this will be 1,447 billion cubic meter. So this is a big gap. But when we talk about that India is a uh, water scarce, if we see the rainfall that comes and the quantum of water that we generate, that way India is not a scarce country. But the way that we use the water, we conserve the water, the efficiency, in water management makes us water scarce. Otherwise, the amount of water that we have is more than the demand that we have. Next, please. So to meet the water quality, we need to have good water sources. But presently, most of the water is abstracted from the groundwater. And 54% of the Indian groundwater has started showing a sign of decrease and it is Niti Aayog has predicted that uh, 21 cities in the country will be zero day zero that means water availability for drinking will not be available in those countries cities so this is a big challenge and we need to be ensure that the water conservation and the efficient use of water is maintained when we talk about the water is supply we need to also talk about the water quality. Next, please. Water quality. So BIS has come out with the standards with the what requiring what is the water quality that is fit for drinking. It gives two standards. That is one which are required and second, which are permitted in case there is no alternate available. So if you look at the country scenario, we find, next please, that most of our cities or most of the states to be around 90 states in the country are infected with arsenic problem, especially the countries along the Ganga Basin, Bihar, West Bengal, and part of UP. So they are arsenic infected. So the water is not fit for drinking. But still, 
in, in absence of any good water supply, it is being used. So which is a cause of concern towards the health. Yes, that's a major challenge. Then, next please. Then we have the issue of metals which are present in the water. And we find that many of the districts have metals like nitrate, chloride, iron, saline. Next, next, next please. Salinity, arsenic, lead, chromium, all presence. The 718 districts where such metal contamination has been found. And most, many of these places, the water is not fit for drinking. Next, please. When we talk about the water quality, we always talk about the dissolved solid, when we talk about the groundwater quality. And if we see that total dissolved solids are always related with electrical conductivity, and we find that electrical conductivity is very, very high in some areas, like the red mark and the brown dark mark, you see the conductivity is more than 3000 microsiemen per centimeter. So the TDS level is very high in this area and the water is not fit for drinking or other purposes. Next please. When we talk about the fluoride, next, next please, next. When we talk about the fluoride, next please, fluoride concentration, that's, next please. So fluoride concentration at many places in the country exceeds the standards. So you see that uh, from the graph, we can see that the dark spots, the brown dark spots indicate a value around 10 milligram per liter, whereas the standard is less than one. So these values are very, very high. And this water is particularly unfit, groundwater is unfit for drinking because it causes a lot of chlorosis and other impacts on the human body. So. Once these are taken out, so water sources are reduced. So we have less availability of water. If you look into that. Next, please. Iron concentration. If you see all the dark dots you see, we see in the map indicate iron concentration more than one milligram, which is uh, the standard which is prescribed, more than the standard which is prescribed in the BIS norms. So all this water, when you will use it, it imparts color. So once color is there, aesthetic appearance is bad. And we know we feel that the water is not fit for drinking. So we discard that water and we need a treatment to remove the iron. We need treatment to remove the arsenic. We need treatment to remove the fluoride content from the ground water so that before it can be used for drinking. Next, please. So nitrate concentration is more than 45 in all these spots where we are seeing on the map, which is more than the standards prescribed in the BAS. So indicating, yes, there are possibilities of contamination from various sources. And uh, even there are places where we have seen the contamination of sewage and other metals taking place because of the leaching effect, uh, dis disposal, unscientific disposal of the sludge, metal bearing sludges, or such waste where leaching takes place. So con metal contamination and other pollutant contamination has been observed at a number of places in the country and number of sites have been observed as contaminated sites for which action plans are being prepared. Next, please. Next. So we look, see the scenario of the water available, the quality of water available. We can see that uh, there are eight facts which we look into that. There is 163 million people do not have access to drinking water. 20% of the disease reported in the country are water related. 66 million people in 22 states are at risk of excess fluoride. 6 million children below age suffer dental, skeletal, and non-skeletal fluorosis because of high fluoride concern. Arsenic is the other big killer, putting at risk nearly 10 million people because the entire Gangetic Belt, the uh, Bihar portion, part of the Bihar, uh, UP and Bengal is contaminated with arsenic. It's a geologic, ge geogenic formation, but yes, contamination. Next, please. So we have 297 districts which are either having impact of iron, nitrate, fluoride, or arsenic in the, and this 
is in many states. Total 24 states have iron problem, 21 states have nitrate problem, 20 states have fluoride problem, and 10 states have arsenic problem. So these are the, some of the challenges we face when we talk about the availability of the water, the quality of water which is available. So unless we can get good quality of groundwater, the surface water, which face problem challenges in supply. Next, please. Now, when we talk about the water supply, we have two sources mainly. The groundwater, which we talk, that is water quality is deteriorating. We have the river water. But if you look at the rivers, we have 351 river polluted stretches. The data of CPCB indicates that 351 stretches of rivers are polluted either in terms of BOD or COD or other parameters. This is because of mostly of discharge of unpolluted, untreated sewage. There is a gap of 40,000 million liters of treatment capacity of sewage. And this around 40,000 million liter is discharged into the rivers or water bodies without any treatment. If you take an example of Ganga, about 500 million liters of wastewater from industrial sources is dumped every day. Yamna also receives around 850 million gallons of sewage every day from Delhi. Now, bad water quality causes a lot of economic burden with respect to the health impact and the waterborne disease that it generates. And it is estimated that around $600 million are lost every year because of the waterborne disease and the burden to the health. Then we have the major problem with the contamination, which is impacting fluoride and arsenic in the groundwater, which is impacting around 1.96 million dwellings. That is units. Next, please. As per the World Bank, a WHO report, World Health Organization report, that many, uh, more than tens of mil 10 million people are affected with the fluoride issues and more than 15 million people are affected by the arsenic in the West Bengal alone. 718 districts are affected by extreme water depletion. Because why? Because India is one of the country which has the highest rate of groundwater abstraction, which is more than the combined sum of China and USA together. So you can imagine now if China and USA are using the water, the amount of water that using, we are using more than that total. So groundwater from 30 million access points, the 30 million access points supplies 85% of drinking water in the rural areas and 48% in urban areas. And the Asia Development Bank predicts that by 2030, India will become a water deficient by 50%. It's a big challenge. We have to see how we can overcome this challenge and pave the way for a good economic growth because water loss is economic loss and the GDP is impacted by the water. Next, please. When we talk about water pollution, river pollution, so it is not only that we need to clean the rivers, we need to have better clean the groundwater resources, improve their quality. Rainwater harvesting has to be done. Because if we see, 45,000 villages in India have access to the pipe water supply. But around 19,000 villages have no access. As I mentioned earlier, the India receives annual rainfall of 1170 mm, but only stores 6% of it. Whereas many other developed countries store 250% of the rainfall that they get over a period of time. It cumulative impact is there. Next, please. To assess the water quality of rivers and the lakes and groundwater, Center Pollution Control Board has established more than 4,000 monitoring stations. And the study data indicates that 351 river stretches are polluted. It's a big one. And this number is increasing. The more the number of stations, the more the polluted stretches because we are abstracting more and more water. So no water is available for this dilution to the industrial affluent or the sewage which is coming into the river. So the question comes, how we will conserve the water, how we will preserve the water, how we have optimized the use of the water, and how we improve the water efficiency. Next, please. 
many programs have been launched for providing water supply, portable water supply to the people in this country. And the National Rural Drinking Water Program has been initiated as a part of that. And uh, around 21,000 crores have been earmarked for 2019-20 for that. Uh, next, please. So the ministry aims to cover 90% rural households with pipe water supply and 80% rural households with tap connections by 2024. And by 2024, 100% tap water supply. But a committee, a public, a estimate committee of parliament has observed that by in 2015, only 47% of rural habitation had a pipe water supply. And out of which only 15% has had tap connections. So this is a vast difference. And wherever these connections have even been provided, the water supply is not uh, what it should be. Like instead of the 55 liters in the uh, our rural areas, it was receiving less than that. So we are not able to provide the adequate amount of water or the right quality of water or the continuous supply of water. So these are the challenges which we are facing in the water supply, improving the water hygiene, improving sanitation. Next, please. This is the amount of money that has been spent. And you can see that uh, there has been a dip in the spending over the few last few years as compared to the earlier, though the problem has is still there. It is more talk, more acute as compared to what was earlier. Next, please. Now, the NRDP is dependent mostly on the groundwater. Whereas if you see, the groundwater is contaminated in over 20 states with high arsenic in many states, chemical contamination, many places, and uh, we don't have good laboratories to test the water quality, which is supplied. So there's need that good laboratories need to be developed to test the water and ensure that the proper water quality is supplied to that. Next, please. Now, some challenges have come, as we have seen the budget, under 100, under 100 water distribution, inefficient utilization of resources. What we have seen, that the efficient use of water is very low, like in the irrigation sector, though the water consumption is, groundwater consumption is 85 to 90 percent, but the energy efficient use is 30 to 40 percent. Same in the domestic sector. And we are always reliant on the monsoon to replenish. As the monsoon fails, our the entire system fails. We have not augmented our rainwater collection systems, infrastructure, like as in advanced countries, which have adequate storage to meet the demand in case of certain uh, years, the rainfall is scanty or low. And the major challenge is providing tap water and supply, clean supply, usable drinking water to all the public. Next, please. Now, when we talk about water supply, and then we see the national or international perspective, the sustainable goal, 17 sustainable goal, out of which the sixth goal talks about making available, ensure availability and sustainable management of water and sanitation for all. So it talks about providing, managing water, providing good sanitation, hygiene, everything. But what are the challenges we have? Do we don't have the laws or what are the reasons? Next, please. We have the national environment policy, which came into 2006, which talk about a holistic approach of water management. It talks about uh, providing fiscal incentives. It talk about crop rotation. It talk about the problems in totality. Then we have the national water policy, which came under in 2012, but it was in 1987 it came and it is under presently under revision by the ministry of water uh, national mission clean ganga then we have a, a another policy national urban sanitation policy which is also under revision then we have the policy on fiscal sludge and septage management now a most important policy is the policy on treated wastewater reuse because now we are talking about conserving the wastewater conserving the fresh water yet and replacing it by 
uh, treated wastewater. And uh, NMCG has gone in many uh, few STPs where treated water is being given to the industries or it is being used by the farmers for irrigation. But this practice has been followed since many times when the water was not available, like the Chennai refinery, petroleum refinery has been using city sewage for years. So now the policies have been framed where it talks about it. And the most important is we are talking about the zero liquid discharge, that the entire water needs to be, wastewater needs to be recycled, treated, reused, recycled or recovered back and used in the process. To accomplish this, missions of the various policies in we have number of programs which have been initiated like the adult mission for rejuvenation and urban transformation swach bharat mission which everybody is aware of it jal jeevan mission national rural development water drinking program what we discussed and all these have to meet all the water wastewater generated and all these need to meet the standards which have are framed by the pollution control board, like the central pollution control board or the state pollution control board. And then we have the some few standards in terms of the sewage and all this by central public health environment engineering organization. And now we have the national green tribunal, which is acting, uh, enforcing these norms, even the stringent norms then that are imposed by the regulatory agencies. So we have the policies, we have the programs, we have the standards which need to be complied. Next please. But COVID has brought something very different now. It has challenged because earlier we used to look for water quality, manual sampling was done and people were going to collect samples. Manual maintenance was there. And uh, we never talked about the risk management because we knew that somebody cannot go there. A sudden pollution comes and we can take care of it. But COVID has thrown a number of challenges that we need to relook the approach that we are following. We need to change the behavior. We need to talk about the conservation. And this has to be done. The perspective has changed. The appreciation of essential services has changed because nobody realized the doctor's importance prior to COVID. Nobody realized the importance of the ambulance people prior to that. So yes, service providers, the water supply, the sanitation people, we never knew that. The importance that they are getting now, yes, because of the scenario, the situ changing situation which has brought this. Now, greater focus on keeping workers in the water. Now, the importance is to keep safe, safe distance, how maintain uh, social distancing, keep the people safe. So it has thrown major challenge. Hygiene has become an important priority for which importance is water supply and sanitation. But this cannot be achieved unless we have a treatment of this but how to treat the wastewater? The question is, what are the technologies? Whether technologies are available? Yes, technologies are available. Only the thing is that there has to be ways to use the wastewater which is generated and conserve the fresh water. That means the pricing mechanism has to be uh, distinct based on the use, and it has to be more than the fresh, less than the fresh water, so that people uh, are willing to buy that water. Second, the plant, wastewater treatment plant need to be operated regularly and that can only be done if the recovery of the waste, recovery of the economics is there. That the money earned from selling the treated wastewater, selling the resources like the fertilizer which we generate from there or the gas that we generate from the sewage treatment plant and it brings a change in the economic because concept and once the economic concept is there, Everybody would like to work on that. Then we need to have standard operating procedures and emergencies because we have to look for ways that emergencies how to be tackled. How we have to ensure that the systems keep on operational with, with less manpower. How the information of the failures are in reaching immediately so that the system are reoriented and recommissioned back immediately. And everybody needs to have a good quality of water, continuous water and sanitation facility available. That's the need of the hour because we need good sanitation to spread, to stop the spread of the pandemic. Next, please. 
now the challenge is we have because we are already moving towards scarcity of water we need to have a water conservation we need to have a policy that yes only waste water will be used and no fresh water will be used we can have tax or we can have charges for the fresh water depending upon the type of water maybe farmers has to pay less in case waste water is not available or the industry has to pay the higher whatever may be the reason the waste water that we generate from the treatment plants is having uh, nutrients also and it's good for farmer besides that the continuous water continuous supply is available because the treatment plants operate continuously so the farmers need to be made aware of the impacts or effects of using this and conserving the water we need to improve the water use efficiency like many crops which are not suitable for that area can be changed and another crops which are local crops in which require less water can be taken there so we need to work on that we need to work on the improving the quality of water supply for which we need to have a strong monitoring network integrated monitoring network so that the data is available with us any quality deterioration taking place we know what has happened It seems we uh, have some challenge with uh, Mr. Kamiyotra's voice. We'll uh, resume it uh, quickly. We are trying to connect him. Please uh, bear with us. Right? Can you hear me? Uh, now you are audible. Okay. We lost you for a while. It so came automatically. Uh, back. Okay. Yeah, okay. So we, we need, need to. Oh, just two minutes more. I take. So it need to have a differential standards depending upon the use, so that the pricing. or the treatment cost can be kept down Te different technologies can be used for treating up to that level but this is not an easy task it need to be given a thought a give down then a very important thing is like we have electricity grid can we th think about having aquifer grid or we can having what we are talking about the interlinking the rivers or so we need to look into that because lot of water is going waste during rainfall flood is are coming in one sector but other sector is dry so we are losing lot of water which can be uh, channelized and reused for rejuvenating the ground water improving the water table and all this then the important thing is we need to have a digitization of the system because when the water supply is there we have found that many places contamination takes place we are not aware pressure drops contamination takes place the waste water or the dirty water gets sucked in the pipeline if we have a good network which can project what the quality of water at that point and coming inform this give this information to the headquarter or the main server which is available to the person sitting there then preventive action can be taken and as a result the water quality will be improved and the losses can be minimized besides the health will be improved and last but not the least the most important is we have to go for the waste water treatment though we can say people may say that the economic presently does not talk about uh, is not in a condition to work for treatment but yes it's a need because when we talk about water conservation we need to have good waste water treatment plants which provide me treated water which can be used as a replacement for the fresh water so that i can augment the flow in the river maintain the minimum flow in the river provide dilution to what discharges are there and keep the water clean and at least maintain the scenario what we are seeing during the lockdown period when the river was clean when the air was clean and we can maintain that biodiversity it will be a big win for us and that need to be done and that that is a lesson we learned that yes it can be done next slide please and now the way forward the water crisis in india is real and it is already here we need to give priority to water preservation and its disciplined use that means efficient use we need to minimize the water consumption we have to 
optimize it in a better way. Governance based on partnership rather than making governance the sole responsibility of government. Everybody has to be a part of that. And there is a need to engage all stakeholders, collective endeavor of participatory water governance and conservation. So that's all, all from my side. Thanks very much. Next slide, please. So water conservation for today is life conservation for tomorrow. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Really, it has been a wonderful session and very informative. I see a lot of comments in the chat box. Uh, it has been really wonderful. You covered almost all the aspects. It was very eye-opening that we are uh, just one-third of uh, U.S. or one-fifth of China, but we, we use much more water than both the countries put together. And many of our cities are going to be uh, zero uh, in 2020, and by 2030, probably many, many cities will be completely zero groundwater. The other challenge which you explain is uh, the water contamination, and most of our rivers, 351 rivers we have, uh, they are contaminated. We have challenges of heavy metal uh, pollutions, and uh, uh, it's, a, it's a really very alarming situation. And uh, your linkage of a COVID situation and the importance of the service is very, very linked to this water distribution. And I, with this, I would take to the next step how the world is really looking at it. What are the developed countries or the uh, so much? Uh, resourceful countries are managing. And we have our next speaker, Fukuhara, is on the same topic. I request Fukuhara-san to take the podium and start his presentation. Fukuhara-san, over to you. Persons, uh, can you see my face? Can you see my voice? Yes, we go, Rasan. You are very okay. much. Yeah, thank you. So, and my name is Kunitelu Fukuhara from Business Strategy Division of the Holy Barabans Techno. Uh, thank you for giving me this kind of opportunity today. First scenario, a trend in the drinking water market. My company, Five, founded in 1975 as the loop company of the Hollywood Limited. So we are specialized in water quality and liquid measurement. One side of employee is belong to the RMD departments, means the making active investment in product development. So, we timing. I mean, so our Hollywood Advanced Tech no, has the environmental regulations and manufacturing processes in the various industries. So uh, we are providing water analyzers itself especially for environmental protection because our mission is to protect water quality around the world. So today, market. Can you consider what is defining WHO, any others? Uh, there should be the some criteria if we say drink of water. Uh, this slide is showing Can you hear my voices? Trees uh, where we can drink from the tap water. So oh, we are looking at those countries and we 
can find stuff or leach and flash water resources. So what I can say from here is the foreign countries uh, has a few developments is also a huge issue. So okay. So uh Fukura san, sorry to interrupt. Uh, we are having challenge what? with your audio. Yes, sir. Yes, it's sir. Bre it's breaking uh in okay uh, and we are uh, it's like going up and down. So is it uh, would you like to check your internet connection? Hello? Audience, please bear with us. I think we are having, facing some challenge with Fukuhara's uh, internet. Mr. Fukuhara, can you turn off your video? I think that might save the, the, band, the bandwidth. Sure, okay. Yeah, please continue, fukuhara -san. Okay, 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 understood. And so we'll be now, so... And problem, as a water resource, the water treatment plant requires an advanced and a more high treatment technologies, means the facility reduction cost will affect to the water feed directly. Uh, in Indian cases, I think the huge nation land and uh, facing the water So, and also another issue is the leakage problem. Uh, as uh, Mr. Kamitra just mentioned now, piping uh, water. Or since the water source is located in near indoor soil area, the water source and even So this is the serious problem. Indian and government are forcing up to 70 categories of industries users to set up online water quality measurements. And in the West, So those kind of the difficulty we are facing now. <clears throat> Hello guys, can you still hear my voices? Uh, we have really challenged and uh, I think we can barely hear you on a continuous basis. Can you start the, the presentation by the boxy first? I think so. Let's move to your yeah. option. Can you fix up your uh, presentation? Okay. Okay. And okay. So I take over for for now. Can I just move the slides to my to my own? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So can everyone hear me loud and clear? <laughs> yes, Evoxy son. Let me welcome you officially, and uh, <laughs> okay, you are very. Sure. Audible. So, audience, please okay. hear with us now. We move to Evoxy. He is a product uh, a specialist for the water product. Today, he's going to explain us what are the drinking water solutions available for the challenges which we discussed in the previous sessions. So, Evoxy, uh, please uh, start your presentation. Okay. So, once again, everyone, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for taking your time to attend this webinar today. My name is Evoxy, and I'm from Holiba Advanced Techno. I'm in charge of water business in Japan, and today I would like to talk about drinking water solution. Okay, so this is a flow of our of a general drinking water process. So based on the process, different parameters are required. So today I would like to focus mainly on water distribution, which is marked in red. So before I delve further, I would like to set, uh, start off by telling everyone that Holiba 
has the capability to provide total solution related to the water business and water and, and water. So there are five main challenges that are faced by our clients today globally. I would like to run through the five challenges and provide solutions to each of the challenges. Okay, challenge number one, many different equipment are required to measure the drinking water before distribution. The solution for this, the solution for this uh, challenge is to use our tap water distribution monitor, the TW100 series, to measure up to seven parameters with just one equipment. This helps to save a lot of space and eliminates the need for many different complicated equipment. For your information, the TW100 is installed at the final, uh, final, water, distribution, final water distribution stage in most of the drinking water plant in Japan. For challenge number two, it is, it is difficult to determine the water quality of raw water, namely groundwater or surface water, which makes dosing of correct, uh, correct uh, concentration of chemical difficult. For this challenge, I propose the use of our online industrial water quality uh, meter, the H1 series, to determine the water quality of different processes so that, um, the, so that the client, I mean the user, can have better uh, control of the entire drinking water process shown in the, shown in, in, in the image below. For challenge number three, it is difficult to determine the final con chlorine concentration, um, especially after the, the disinfection and before um, water distribution. The solution for this challenge would be to use our, resi our residual chlorine meter to, uh, to monitor the final chlorine concentration after, this, after disinfection and use the TW100 series uh, for water distribution. For challenge number four, red water caused by uh, old rusty pipes. The solution for this challenge is to use the TW100 series again to monitor the color and turbidity of the water. Measurement readings uh, with high color and turbidity would mean that the water conditions is not uh, within permissible limit. So this would also show, uh, allows, uh, allows us to determine which pipes are the cause of the red water. And last but not least for challenge number five, water, water, water tanks are located in, in remote areas. So the TW100 series has an output signal that enables the user to send the data to an external device uh, to for remote monitoring. So can anyone hear me? Sorry, am I audible? Is it better now? Yes, uh, oh. Roxy, you are audible. Okay, sorry, I was looking at the chat. Chat, so so, I'm sorry. So okay, let me um, so for like uh for the fifth, fifth challenge, like the TW100 series has an output signal that ena enables the user to like um to send the data via the IS um. 232C um, output. So because of this, the user can actually build his or her own smartphone application to monitor the data on of his, of his or her own, um, like uh, to monitor the data on his on her, on his or her uh, smartphone. So in this case, the user does not need to go to the site as often, so they can actually do it remotely. And by doing remotely, it actually saves a lot of time um, traveling and uh, traveling. So they can save a lot, of, a lot of time and and um, expenses. Okay, so before I begin, I would like to talk about um, the two types of monitoring type. So currently in India, offline monitoring is more prevalent. So as you can see from the picture on the left, offline monitoring is manual, not continuous, and has to be analyzed in a lab. However, for online monitoring, measurement is continuous and provide real-time data to the, to the user. Okay, so for offline monitoring, it is... Offline monitoring is usually used uh, for preliminary uh, monitoring, monitoring due to its low initial cost. However, offline monitoring has many disadvantages as compared to online uh, monitoring. So, the, so there are around five points that I would like to talk about today. Okay, so point number one, offline monitoring is prone to human errors. So while online monitoring is... Point number two, since offline monitoring is not continuous, it can only determine the water quality of the water at a specific time when a sample was taken. So on the other hand, online monitoring measures the water quality, water quality continuously, allows the user to, to determine the water quality at any given time, giving the user a better picture and control over the entire process. For point number three, offline monitoring is labor intensive, while online monitoring is less labor intensive because everything can be done remotely on, from, a, from, a, from, a, from the, the, the water plant or office. For point number four, determine on the equipment use, 
reagents may be may be required for offline monitoring. For our online monitoring products, reagents are not required. And last but not least, for point, of, point number five, for offline monitoring, the sample condition may change over time, causing the sample quality to be different when it reaches the lab for analysis. On the other hand, online monitoring enables the measurement of sample at its current condition, which provides the most accurate data of the sample at any given time. So next, I'd like to introduce some products of the H1 series that are commonly used in the process stage of the drinking water plants. So as you can see from the, uh, from the arrow mark in red, the H1 series are used in the entire purification process. And depending on the process and stage, the required uh, parameters also differs. For the first um, parameter that I'd like to introduce, the pH, uh, we have HP200 series. So some of these the feature, features include tough electrodes, so where the glass of the electrodes are reinforced to better, um, to better withstand against impact. So this is, this is very useful in preventing uh, breakages for processes where insoluble metals are present in the water uh, when, along with high flow rate. For feature no, features number two, we have ultrasonic cleaner that uses um, burst oscillation technique to increase the cleaning effects as, as compared with our conventional ultrasonic cleaners. And for last year, we actually had, uh, we, be we began the sale of our new gel field electrode where refilling of internal solution is not required. So this helps to reduce the maintenance time because um, uh, refilling actually takes, takes up quite some time as well. So in addition, the gel field electrode can also measure water sample with conductivity as low as 10 microsiemens per centimeter. So this actually provides more utility as compared to our conventional series as well. So this is like a very good upgrade. For conductivity, uh, we have HE200C. So there are two types of sensor available to suit the configuration of the user. So for connector type, the cable and sensors, the cable and sensor are sold separately. Then the user can select the required cable length according to their and, and attach it to their sensor accordingly, according to their configuration. And the good thing about this is that when a sensor is broken, only the sensor needs to be replaced. So this makes the replacement cost easier and cheaper. While on the other hand, for the lead type, the cable is attached to the sensor by default. When the sensor is broken, the entire sensor, sensor need, along with the cable needs to be replaced. However, lead type sensor has more configuration option and it can be immersed into tank while connector type cannot. So that is the, the main difference of the lead type and connector type. All right, this figure shows the various ranges of conductivity. So from the top to bottom, the lower the conductivity, the lower the concentration of impurities such as eons present in the water. For drinking water, the conductivity level should be around 100 microsiemens per centimeter, as you can see as it is marked in a blue text box. And next slide, please. Okay, so next, for residual chlorine, we have HR200RT. So some of the features include easy maintenance and low running costs because the cathode sensor of the entire sensor is replaceable, as you can see on the picture on the, on the left, um, the, the, the black arrow. And next, pH compensation. The concentration of uh, residual chlorine is, is affected by the pH level. So this is why it is very important to keep in mind that the pH level of the water is, is always around seven, pH seven. So, and by using pH compensation function, it helps to ensure that the measurement reading is stable even when there's a slight fluctuation in uh, the pH level as well. And last but not least for the point number three, we also have automatic zero calibration as an option to help the user ease their operation as they do not need to go to the site to perform zero calibration when required. Okay, so this is the last parameter for the H1 series. For turbidity, we have HU200TBH. So some of the features include like automatic, uh, automatic range change so where the transmitter will detect the sample and change the measuring range accordingly to the optimal range. This is a very, a very convenient function. So for point number two, we have continuous cleaning for the measuring cell with a motor wiper. As you can see, the wiper is just above the sensor on the picture on the left as well. So point three and four, we have automatic zero calibration and pressure, pressurized debubbler as an option to help the user better manage his or her process. This is very important as because the sensor uses laser to measure the turbidity. So when there's air bubble present in the water, the effect of the, the readings will be affected. So in this case, we highly recommend you to, um, to get the, the debubbler as well to, to remove the air bubbles for more stable measurements. 
Okay. All right, so this is an example of drinking water plant in Japan. As you can see, depending on the process of the drinking water, uh, different parameters are um, like, depending on the process of the drinking, drinking water, different parameters are measured using the H1 series for, uh, for the purification process. And just right before the, and just right before the, and just right before the, before water distribution, a TH, a, a TW100 is installed as, as shown on the extreme right of, extreme right of the picture to ensure that the, the drinking water is safe for consumption. Okay, so once again, I'd like to introduce this, uh, the formerly the TW100 series. So this is the main product that I would like to introduce this afternoon. The TW the TW hundred series is a water distribution monitor that is usually installed at water supply reservoirs, water supply pumps, water towers, and service pipes. So this particular equipment can measure up to seven different parameters, with five parameters being the standard parameters. So some of the features include like automatic cleaning using a wiper for turbidity and colors measuring cell. Second point, automatic zero calibration. And third point, internal internal leak detection. And the fourth point, alarm that you can set it to your own configuration. So not only that, like remote remote monitoring is also possible for the user to monitor the measurement data and alarm and alarm history to the output signal, which is RS two three two C. So as mentioned earlier, the TW hundred can measure up to seven parameters. So the standard parameters are namely turbidity, color, residual chlorine, water pressure, and pH. For the optional add on, uh, for the optional parameters, it is um, conductivity and water uh, water temperature. So the TW hundred does not require any reagent for for me for measurement, which makes it an excellent choice for online monitoring. As it, as it, as without because by not using any reagent, it helps to reduce running costs as well. So our main concept and design for this equipment is compact and easy operation. Okay, so this is the internal structure of TW hundred. The dimension of this unit is very compact. It is only 420 millimeters um, by 350 millimeters by 160 millimeters. And measurement of up to seven different parameters is possible. For easy maintenance, the measuring cell of the turbidity and color cell is made transparent so that the user can easily tell if the measurement cell is, uh, is clogged, is dirty, with just, one, with just one look. And next for the, for excellent, user experience, we focus on the use of LCD, LCD display and easy operation. With an LCD display, all parameters and necessary commands are shown in a single display. And not only that, measurement data can also be accessed easily with just one touch. Features and functions. So some of the functions that I would like to highlight today are safety, data management, and calibration and maintenance. For safety, the TW100 is equipped with a wide, wide array of alarm functions that can be set in the settings according to the, the client's the user requirements. And also in the event with, when abnormal operation is, is detected, the TW will, will hold all the operations completely to prevent damage, to prevent further damage and allow time for the serviceman to arrive at, to arrive at the scene for, to rectify the problems. And for data management, remote monitoring can be done by using RS232C output and a CF, I mean, a, a compact flashcard can also be used for data logging as well. The, the data can be easily exported as a as CSV format to a computer for analysis. For calibration and maintenance, the TW100 is equipped with automatic zero calibration function and automatic automatic cleaning, which helps to make uh, maintenance easy, uh, easier. Okay, the TW100 can be used for various applications. For today, I'd like to focus on mainly two applications today. So. Um, the first application is number two, um, the water source for water treatment plant, and number four, water distribution network for monitoring water quality along distribution lines. For target application number two, the TW100 is used to measure the, the water quality of the influent to determine the to determine if the influent uh, meets the requirement for the purification process. If the requirement does not sorry, if the influent does not meet the requirement, free treatment will have to be performed. And in most countries pH, temperature, and conductivity of the groundwater and clean waters are usually measured as influent as well. And for target application number four, 
Quantitative and qualitative measurement are used to, to determine which pipes are in bad condition and, and require replacement. This is done by analyzing the measurement values of the water. So pipes in bad condition will usually give a reading that deviates from the normal value. So this um, value, so this enables the user to pinpoint which pipes um, to, expect, to inspect and to replace. Okay, next I'd like to talk about maintenance. Depending on the maintenance cycle, different maintenance procedure has to be conducted. As a rule of thumb, calibration of sensor and visual inspection of filter has to be done once every three months, and cleaning of sensor has to be done once every six months. Last but not least, cleaning of pipes and measuring um, cell has to be done once every 12 months, uh, 12 months uh, using um, hydro hydroxy ammonium chloride, which, uh, which, has to, which has to be prepared by the user locally. Sim, uh, in a similar fashion, depending on the usage of um, cycle of the TW, TW100, replacement of service parts, service parts and overhaul parts needs to be conducted once every six months, once every year, and once every three years. So finally, to, make, um, to sum up everything, I would like to sum up the benefits of, the, of using TW100 series. So there are four top benefits that I would like, that I would like to talk about today. So point number one, um, able to able to measure up to seven parameters, so this helps to save a safe space as only one equipment is required. Point number two, no reagent. This helps to reduce running costs because reagent costs money as well. And point number three, remote monitoring. So this helps to save time and, and reduce expenses on traveling to remote locations. And this allows the the service men to have more time to to do their own uh, to do to do other jobs and jobs as well. And last but not least, for point number four, twenty four hours monitoring. So this allows the user to know that the quality of the water distributed is safe at any moment. Okay, so there are some applications of um, example of TW series, the TW100 installed on site uh, globally. From the top left corner, from the, from the top left hand corner, the TW100 is installed in a water distribution tank. From the top right hand corner, the TW is installed in a container or shelter. From the bottom left hand corner, the TW, the TW is installed in a in a van for mobile for mobile mobile water quality monitoring system. So it is like a, a like a water mo mo water monitoring system that can be that can move around to different um to different spots. And from the bottom right of the the bottom right hand corner, the TW hundred is installed in a public to toilet to ensure that the water is clean. <laughs> Okay, so an for an overview of the. Um, okay, so like uh, this is a project overview in India, so it's still it is still in discussion, and so we are trying to provide um solutions, and like we'll be very happy to get feedback as well. So in in India, we have the capability to provide solutions to make our TW hundred series more customized to our clients' requirement. So for instance, like we have solution to provide solar battery, solar panel, and modem and modem to make our TWS 100 more self-sustainable and, and versatile. So if you have any questions or if you need any help, please feel free to contact Holy by India for more information. And in Japan itself, we have sold more than 450 units of TW 100 um, in the recent years. So in some rare cases, as you can see from the bottom right-hand corner, the TW 100 can be installed in private house to monitor the quality of the water being distributed from the pipes to the house. And on the other hand, on the other hand, the common applications are, are like um, pump stations and distribution reservoirs. And this is one of the case study that is, uh, I would say, it is a successful case study in Malaysia. So from the picture, from the picture on the left, you can see that the TW hundred is installed below a water tower, and you can see that. By zooming in, you can see that the TW100 is actually installed into a container with a data with a data logger. So the point of the of the data logger is to collect the information and send the measure and send the measurement data to the users to, to the user's own server and uh, own server for remote monitoring. And Malaysia is, is in Asia, Malaysia is one of our more successful story. So in up to now, we have sold around 190 units of TW100 just in Malaysia, sorry, just in KL itself, which is the capital of Malaysia. And from, from now onwards, from, we actually have planned to, um, to expand further 
further up north into the Penang area, as you can see um, slightly north from KL. So, so we have plans to further expand our business and ex expand our like uh, brand architecture as well. And not only that, Holiba also provide like solutions for heavy metal for heavy metal. So if you have any like, inquiries or you need any help with heavy metal solution, please feel free to contact Holiba in there as well. Thank you very much for your attention. This is the end of my presentation. And so I'd like to move on to the Q&A session. Thank you, Oxy. Uh, it was a wonderful presentation. And uh, we had a lot of clarity on our solutions from Horiba. Audience, as we can see, uh, we have some challenge we had with uh, Fukuhara's uh, connectivity. So let's move to question and answer session. Uh, we have Hello, many interesting. Your voice is muting now. Am I audible? Yes, you are audible. OK. Uh, so we move to now question and answer session. So I will start uh, Q&A with uh, Kamyatra sir's question. There are many, many questions to him. So may I request to uh, let's open your uh, camera, sir? And then we can start the question answer. So first question is uh, from Kaushik uh, Saha. Uh, uh, sorry, Rashmi P. The electrical conductivity in Kerala is not that much high, ex except in coastal region, I think. So that's actually a, yeah. just a confirmation. Yeah. Then uh, Mr. Biswas, um, Rinal Biswas, is how to address drinking water issue of over-exploited groundwater area. Would you like to answer, sir? Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> one thing is that uh, when we talk about over-exploitation, that means uh, what we just referred in my presentation also, that uh, we need to have uh, ways to reduce the water, uh, fresh water content. And uh, in the cities uh, where we have the treatment plant, so already the waste treated wastewater can be used. But where in the major challenges in the rural side, where decentralized treatment plants are a big challenge. But we have to work on rainwater harvesting and rainwater storage there. And this is one thing. Second thing is what I we also discussed that the interlinkage between the rivers or the aquifers need to be looked into that like how we reach out that. so remediation uh, remediation of the body water body is a major thing which need to be done in those areas where the groundwater is uh, depleted or it's showing a sign of depletion yeah i think that reminds me we had a drive recently to plant many many trees uh, under the river beds uh, so that it can conserve more water. The next question is from Mr. Tanmay Kate. How many river are being considered in India for river cleaning program? So, the government is working very hard on uh, Ganga is the major river, but beside Ganga, uh, Yamna and uh, many other rivers, the government is already working. And for all the uh, sites contaminated uh, what is the polluted river stage is what I mentioned 351 there's a the government is working to prepare action plan for their remediation so the action plan will ensure that what are the sources which are contributing to it and how we can uh, take the remedial measures to ensure that uh, the pollution from the sources is abated and uh, the water E flow is maintained because the government is also working very hard on the e flow, minimum flow in the river to maintain dilution and all this. So, simultaneously, many other aspects are working. The government is working with many European countries to have river cleans and learning from their experience what they have. So, number of steps are being taken by the Jal Shakti Mission and the Mission Clean Ganga for remediation of the water bodies, remediation of the rivers and improving the water quality of the river. It's already being worked. Next, next question is from Mr. Jain Sina. And this is talking about uh, what should be con 
concentration of contaminants in ideal drinking water so if you uh, <coughs> you see when we talk about drinking water you can't talk about contaminant <laughs> yeah so now if you are talking about the river water then as per the cpcb criteria cpcb has uh, categorized the river water quality in five a b c d e depending upon the bod level depending upon the boron level and depending on the coliform level and now each category a b c d e give different use of water water a can the water can be used is fit for drinking with uh, chlorination and all this category b c if we go then they are fit for drinking with conventional treatments if you go to d and e they are fit for irrigation purposes so the water is categorized as that but when you talk about the uh, presence of minerals and metals or in the water drinking water that is as for the bis norm so bis has specified two norms that one is which has to be there but accepted and then second is the desired so in case the accepted water there is no source which give you that type of water quality then the desired is also acceptable in the worst case scenario so impacts of in but in some cases uh, there is no relaxation in terms of the matter presentation or other parameters depending the source may be any so if the that values are exceeding then it is unfit for drinking irrespective whether you have a source or you don't have a source it is very clearly defined in that okay so we take next question uh, which organization has specified the specification for drinkable water this is from mr mallikarjun kambayalal i think you already answered bis has specified yeah. so yeah go to the next question uh, this is from mukesh sina how to manage level measurement of level and pressure of the sewage plants and wastewater plants what are the technologies available i think this is a little bit off beat but maybe you could answer quickly i have to respond or yeah this is a level measurement of uh, and pressure for the sewage plants so I, I i'm not sure री this is from adit mittal interstate water transportation is increasing how far it would be safe to keep water body safe uh, can you repeat sir uh, meaning is uh, uh, there are some now transportation we are doing in especially in ganga river uh, yeah and is it safe and how far it can be safe for water our rivers <laughs> transportation if done properly because uh it, what happens when you want to have a trans navigation in the river you train the rivers also so that means you desilt the rivers so it has to be done within the range that the river can take it it cannot be that you can dredge the river anyway and where you have the dredged material that is another area so only problem or challenges come when you have shipping or movement on the road uh, on the uh, 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 riverways then the sewage is discharged so is that sewage treated and up to what level and secondly whether that sewage is taken at the port or where you are disembarking and then that is taken into another treatment plant for treatment so that is the major thing which need to be looked into that besides the spillage of oils from the this boats and all this that is another source of uh, water contamination which need to be looked at and then we have to be prepared for the accident because when this barge they will be carrying transport a uh, cargo and if it is a chemical cargo we should be aware that what is a chemical cargo and what are the remedial actions required for that so accidental preparedness has to be there before we allow such chemicals to be move in that place otherwise the normal cargo may will not that create that much problem if the 
waste water is taken care of, the oil spillage are taken care of, and the river training is taken care of. <coughs> Thank you, sir. Uh, next question is more rather uh, more on the technology side. What are the technologies available for purification of water and reuse of water as processed water? This question is from Mr. Anuj Kumar Chauhan. Uh, I'm not sure whether we can take this question for this forum, but we can certainly, you can briefly, quickly answer if you have. You see, when you talk about the technology, technology is not a constraint, if you see. We have a number of technologies which can be used for treating the water. The treatment, water treatment depends upon the quality of water you have. And uh, the, as I mentioned that, uh, if it falls under the category A, B, C, D, E, what CPCB has prescribed. So category A is fit for drinking with a chlorination, disinfection. Category B with conventional treatment. So conventional means you have a filter, you have a sedimentation tank and uh, filters, uh, dechlorination. But only question is up to what level you want to treat. If you want to have a level of treatment as prevalent in the US and EU, the cost will be very high. Whether we want to have that water fit to up to that level, then we have to look for that. Otherwise, technologies exist for that even today. And the water that we get is equivalent to any quality that we can have. The technology wise is not a challenge. So you have filtration techni uh, technology, you have RO, you have the uh, nano filtration. So many such technology in combination can be worked depending upon the water quality. Another interesting question uh, for the pollution of heavy metal is coming from Sachin Mishra. What are the best remediation technique for heavy metals contamination in groundwater in the vicinity of industry? <coughs> now the first thing is we have to ascertain whether the pollution is due to industry or it is a due, due to geogenic sources. So, if it is due to industry, the groundwater contamination, if one done, it is a very costly affair to remediate it. But few, at few places, microbial culture has been used for remediating the metal contaminated site. And uh, Alma, especially in the case of chromium in very near in the Haryana itself, it has been done. And uh, similar studies have been done in Tamil Nadu where it has been successful. But at many other places, if the contamination is very high, then, they, then it becomes a very a difficult chance or choice because it is very, very costly to decontaminate groundwater unless you are able to bring up to that level. That means either you have to take out the entire water, treat it and do it. But that's really a big challenge. So it depends upon what is the type of contamination that you have and how you can stop it. So if it is from industry, probably we can have some solution. But if it is coming from geo side, then I think we can't have it. We can't have it. We can't have it. OK, this is a very interesting question coming from uh, Patak sir from uh, CPCB. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> this and this is more economic side, sir. I'm really interesting. So he says, Kamitra, sir, whether rolling of GST and abolishing CES has potential for more crisis development. Very interesting. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, I just want to have what what crisis you are pointing. Can you define that crisis? I think we are not online Q&A, so maybe you have to answer. No, but I'm not able to clear because, yes, financial crisis, yes. The board will have financial crisis. But that can be offset by increasing the consent fees, which most of the boards have done. Or second, already the ministry is considering giving the money to it. Already the consideration is there with the ministry to give the amount equivalent to the CES fund to the states. So if uh, the... Otherwise, Patak, we can uh, discuss in the over a cup of tea. Yeah, to me, it looks like he's uh, concerned that on one side we are taking out the uh, money, uh, removing all, uh, abolishing all the funds, and then uh, we are looking for some 
kind of enforcement or cleaning program. So this doesn't go hand in hand. Yeah, this will not go hand yeah. unless the boards are strengthened. Right. <clears throat> the compliance cannot be strong if the boards are weak. There is uh, another question from Mrs. Sahaj Sahaja Ji. Just like carbon footprint calculation in consideration, very important to know the level of emissions of CO2 in air. Will water footprint be given the same importance in future? That's why I, uh, in my presentation, I mentioned that uh, the person, if the person is using less water, then the benefit should go to him. If the two industries are there and one is consuming less water and polluting at X level and another is also having more water but producing at X level, then the rate should be higher for the person having more water but producing the same quality. So that's uh, an advantage to the person who is having carbon footprint, a uh, water footprint less. We have to look into such things. And uh, like uh, maybe ZLD plants are already having certain advantages. Uh, in, in yeah, but, uh, but ZLD is also having uh, some issues with respect to the greenhouse gas emission because they are energy intensive. So we have to look into those aspects simultaneously. <coughs> that it should not happen that we conserve the water footprint but enhance the carbon footprint. <coughs> okay, now uh, uh, from policy uh, to the technology side, I move to uh, the equipment side. The questions are coming to Mr. Kiboxi and Fukuhara san. Kiboxi, this question is to you for a TW100. This is a multi parameter analyzer. What parameters it can measure? Parameters, um, depending on the depending on the parameters, you can like the standard parameter is pH, conductivity, stability, color, and water water pressure. Then, if you need if you require add on like add on how to say that add on parameters, you can actually purchase um water temperature and water temperature and what's it? ah it. Sorry, I forgot. Color, fluoridation. So, no, sorry. Uh, it is conduct. So uh, the standard option is turbidity, color, residual chlorine, and water pressure. Then, for optional, it is conductivity and water temperature. Yes. Yeah. This question was from Mr. Anup Shukla. Uh, probably we know him all. Okay. Again, uh, Pardak sir is asking uh, principle of residual chlorine measurement. Principle of residual chlorine. Residual chlorine. How do we measure residual cloning? cloning? Okay, for residual cloning, we actually use a polar polarographic method. So that is our, our um, measuring measuring method. Yes, that is our measuring method. Then this question is from Mr. Ashok Tiwari. Uh, this is probably on the H1 series. How is the cleaning process? Is it through water or acid or chemical? Oh, depending um, depending on the required um, cleaners, we have a brush type, water jet, and water air. Then we also have chemical um, cleaners. So, and but what we what we what we really recommend is the ultrasonic cleaner. However, it, it is very difficult to like um, to to judge like which cleaner cleaner to use because depending on the depending on the contaminants and depending on the the process, different different cleaners has different advantages and disadvantages. So if you if you require like uh, more information about cleaners, you can actually always ask the inquirer to like uh, Holy by India, and they will provide more information to provide solution to you. Okay. Uh, question from again, Patrick sir. What is the calibration process, and what is the frequency? <clears throat> I think you should answer for EW hundred as well as okay. So the calibration is actually depend. Um, for the calibration we, we use like pH four, so pH seven and four to, to calibrate the enti the entire um, series, and depend and for stability we use a uh, formazin to calibrate. So they are yes. So like depending on the the parameters, like uh, how do you say like um uh, for stability we use formazin standard solution, then for color we use a standard color solution, then for residual chlorine we use DPD color metric method, then for for water pressure it is the standard um standard water gauge and for pH we use a pH uh, standard solution which is pH 7, 7 or 4. Yes. Okay, I go to the next question from Mr. Ashok Tiwari. Is the signal output is 0 to 1 volt or 4 to 20 milliampere, modbus type? Uh, yes. 
unable to link on light to cloud. This is for TW. Okay, for TW, it is uh, 420 and it is, uh, the output is, uh, sorry, the output is RS232. So what you, what you do is actually to, um, to use the RS232C to output the, the entire data to your own data logger or to your own server. Then from then on, you can actually build your, your, own, your own software. Then from then you can do the remote, uh, remote monitoring. So it That's can it. be uploaded to cloud, yeah? And it's uh, uploading to cloud is actually based on the, the client's own infrastructure. Because what we can do is to uh, export the data from, from our TW series via the IS232C. And from then it is all up to the client to, to get their own solution to their own infrastructure and solution to build their own um, server. Great. Uh, this is again a question, but I think you already answered about the calibration. How auto zero ensures calibration? Okay, auto zero calibration is um this is actually like um like once in a while you like when there's a drift in the the reading, you, you have to do a zero calibration. But uh, in this case, um like for zero calibration, you have, you have to add uh, have to uh, flush the the system with clean um uh, depending on the country, like you can flush with like clean water or or tap water or something. But by having automatic zero calibration, like when there's a drift, they will actually do that, perform the automatic um, zero, zero uh, uh, calibration, like uh, automatically on, like during specific time, like set by the, the user. So like in short, automatic uh, zero calibration is very useful because the client do not have to go down to the site to do the calibration um, as frequent. So but by doing this, they can save a lot of time and they can work on other projects as well. Does that answer your question? Uh, yes. Adding to that, one more question is, uh, what do you mean by automatic calibration? Automatic, automatic calibration. So could you explain the whole process once more? That's automatic, the question. Sorry, automatic zero calibration or automatic calibration? Yeah. Okay, automatic, okay, so for automatic calibration, it is, okay, what we do is, how, how do we like determine that it is auto? So all we have to do, I mean for H1 series, all we have to do is to add the, this is the solution, then we add a sensor and we just click the button. Then you, it will detect the, the solution automatically and they will, they will have a bar to show that it, will, uh, it is calibrating the, the sensor. Then after that, you will say, that, okay, so next, please uh, insert, um, please uh, calibrate with pH4. Then you, all you have to do is just change the, the pH4 and you press the button once again and you just calibrate it by itself. So this is what we mean by auto calibration. Then for auto zero calibration, it is when there's a drift, you have to reset the, 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 zero, the zero line. So that is where we use the, um, zero calibration, and most of the most of the time, automatic zero calibration is actually um, an option. So you have to purchase the the, the special um, valve to to do the um, the zero calibration. Zero. Auto, automatic zero calibration. There is a follow up question from uh, Mr. Ramagol Rajagopalan. Okay. Uh, do we have a calibration standards? Calibration standards. Uh, depending on the the parameters, we have different um, calibration standards. Like for 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 example, like for pH, we we use uh, pH seven and four. But of course, you can you can do pH two, you can do pH four, seven, or nine. It depend it depends on the 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 user. Yes, and we we, we actually do do have um to produce um calibration solutions and, and powders as well if if required. So with this, uh, I think we have almost uh, answered all the questions and uh, still some questions are coming, but we are already now over one and a half hour. So I would uh, like to really thank okay. all the audience and uh, request uh, Mutra sir to give his departing comment. And uh, also, uh, Fuku Rasan, if you have to say some departing comment. Okay, so let me give you a comment from me first. So just thank you for the journey, everyone. And listen, I have to say so is for inconvenience about the connection today. But the, the slew of these sessions, uh, this webinar, uh, every session to us. And hope that we hold you and provide good solutions to secure and help for uh, how can I say, uh, drinking water market in India from now on. So please contact our uh, affiliate Holiba Indian members. Thank you so much today.
Sorry, Vukharasan, we couldn't take you your session because of bad connection, but we look forward for one more opportunity where we can have a separate session with your in-depth presentation. Okay, uh, Amitra, sir. Yeah, thanks. Amitra, sir, over to you. Your voice is muted, looks like. So I want to thank all the audience for the questions and they asked and in case some questions have not been answered, so they can uh, send it on the mail and we'll respond back. And if somebody wants a presentation, they kindly send the mail ID so we can send the presentation to all. We can share the presentation to everybody. We will share this presentation and we'll also upload uh, this into YouTube, the entire session. And we'll share you by email uh, on your registered email all the information. So with this, I would like to really thanks again, once again to all of you to join this session and thanks to the speakers and we really appreciate your time. And uh, uh, I will sign off and look forward to our next webinar, which will be bringing more and more. Thank you very much for your time today. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.